Pulsar Lab. This is the part two. In part one, we measured the period of rotation uh, for this pulsar. In part two, we're going to measure the distance. Now, we're measuring in three different wavelengths. So the distance, think of it as a race. I've got three different cars all traveling at different speeds. And so as they get to the finish line, if the race is short, that time difference is going to be real small. But as the race gets longer, that time difference gets bigger and bigger. If the race gets even longer, that time difference is even bigger. So we're going to measure these time differences from the first one to the second one, from the first one to the third one, and from the second to the third one. And we're going to use those time differences to measure the distance. To measure the time difference, we have to have some reference point to measure from. And I've just drawn in a line here. So we're going to measure from the distance from the line to the pulse in each one of these. The distance from the line to the pulse. The distance from the line to the pulse. And the other thing you have to be careful about is you have to measure to the same pulse coming through. So you couldn't measure, say, to this pulse and then to this pulse and then to this pulse. You have to make sure you're measuring to the same pulse. And so I, in this one, it's marked. In the others, I've marked which pulse to measure to. And down here, which pulse to measure to. OK? Now, you don't have to memorize all of these instructions. The worksheet that I gave you will tell you what to do. You just have to know how to read it. OK? So here's what we did a, a minute ago to measure the period. Now we're going to come down here. It's still the same graph. So one second is 44.5 millimeters. That's measured from uh, one tick on here to the next one. OK, that hasn't changed. So now we're going to measure the distance from the line to the pulse. The distance from the line to the pulse. So if I measure that, that'll help a bit. Maybe not. Nope, just clear. Okay. Measuring from the line to the pulse, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48. And that looks pretty much right on 48. So I'm going to call that 48 millimeters. And then we're going to measure from the line to the pulse. So here is 10, 20, 30, 40. 45, this is 44, so this is between 44 and 45, I'm going to call it 44.5. And measuring from the line to the pulse, here's 10, 20, 30, looks like it's right on 35, so I'm going to call that 35 millimeters. Okay, so on our worksheet, we're going to record those numbers. The distance from one pulse to the next pulse, uh, D1 is 48. And from on the second line, it was 44.5. And on the third line, it was 35. So these are the distances measured from the line to the pulse. From the line to the pulse. And then, if you'll notice, we're going to calculate the change in time, the difference in the time, and it tells you what to do. Take D1 and subtract D2. 
So it takes D1, that's 48, minus 44.5, and that is 3.5. That's the difference between, here's our three race cars, that's the difference between the, from the first pulse to the second, to the, on the next one. It's this difference. Okay, delta T2, it says take T1 minus D3. Okay, it's the difference between when the first car arrived and the third car arrived. So 48 minus 35 is, is... I lost the number. Okay, I'll just calculate it again. Uh, 48 minus 35 is 13. And then it tells you to take for delta, for the change in time, this is the difference between the second car and the third car. So it's 44.5 minus 35 and that is 9.5. So if you just learn to read this, and, you, and on the test should have these, these same instructions, same numbers, it would look just like this. So take D1 minus D2, that's 3.5. D1 minus D2. Take D1 minus D3, 48 minus 35, that's 13. And then D2 minus D3, 44.5 minus 35, that's the 9.5. Now, these are distances on the sheet of paper. I need to convert that to time. And remember, we convert the distance to the time because we know one second represents 44.5 millimeters. So 3.5 seconds is much smaller than 44. And so this would be much less than one second. So we're going to take 3.5 divided by 44.5, and that's 0 0.079. Uh, 3.5 divided by 44.5, and 0 0.079. Then the next one is 13. 13 divided by 44.5 is 0.292. And the third one, 9.5 divided by 44.5. And so we're changing, we're changing our distance measurement into a time measurement, and we're using our conversion factor. Uh, 0.213 seconds. So that's the time differences. Now to calculate the actual distance, it's, you're going to take this tells you to take the change in time one, which would be this number, the time, divided by this factor. This factor accounts for the interstellar gas and, and the frequency and all kinds of things like that. So this converts that time difference. Remember the cars, and the, the bigger the time difference, the longer the race. So this converts the time difference, uh, accounts for the gas in, in between the stars and things like that. So it's, it's just this number. So I'm going to take, it tells you to take delta T1, this is 0 0.079, and divide it by that 0 0.000375. So 0 0.079 divided by 0 0.000375 gives you the distance 210 0.667, and that would be the distance in parsecs. So we can get another value for the distance by taking the change in time delta T2, that's our 0.292, and 
and dividing it point by 0 0.001515, uh, 0.292 divided by 0 0.001515. And that's 192.739. In the third one, it says take delta T3, divide by this number, 0.213, divided by your 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0114, 0 0.213, divided by 0 0.00114 is 186.842. So we get, we actually come up with three different values for the distance. And so our final answer will be the average of these three. We'll add them up, divide by three, and we'll get 196.4. 440 for the distance to that star. 196 parsecs away, and we're doing that by looking at uh, the time differences in the different frequencies. So I've gone through the first one with you. I'll give you these numbers for the second and the third one. Follow the instructions on it and see if you can do the calculations. You'll upload these sheets back into CAMS. Uh, this is called a, and this will be a lab grade. So this is your Pulsar lab.